what i did here i have taken out the posterior segment of the vertebral column in the lumbar zone at the level of t12 l1 at that level i can see the conus medullaris i cannot see the cauda equina which is covered by the dura mater so now slowly i will cut the dura mater and see the cauda equina and the dorsal root ganglion then central process from the dorsal root ganglion and the peripheral process from the dorsal root ganglion how it is meeting with the motor rootlets becoming root all these things are covered by the dura mater and the comparison between the position of the dorsal root ganglion at the conus medullaris level and each and every lumbar level so let's see all these things through dissection so we can see inside how the cauda equina So now it is very clear. So you can see that's the part conus medullaris. Now the cauda equina. How the rootlets are coming. Now slowly we'll get the concept of so-called dorsal root ganglion in the foramen. Actually, the dorsal root ganglion alone is not there in the foramen. So we know theoretically dorsal root ganglion where all the somatic, autonomic, sensory fibers, cell bodies are there. Those nerves are pseudo unicular neuron. They have a central process. They have a peripheral process. Central process is attached at this conus medullaris. So the length of the central process is different at different level because dorsal root ganglion is there just inside the foramen where it is connecting with the motor rootlets the central process of the dorsal root ganglions are the sensory rootlets so they are joining with the motor rootlets at the foramen and forming the root so dorsal root ganglion at the l1 level the length of the central process and the peripheral process at the l1 level say this is l4 so if this is l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 so the central process of the l1 and the central process of the l4 are not same so that's the beauty at this area which is not seen in the upper area because where the cord is there the central process are almost same at every level but from this conus medullaris the central process of this nerve fibers residing at the dorsal root ganglion are different at the different level so they are all covered by the dural sleeve so what we are getting so here this is one foramen so this is the dorsal root ganglion so actually if you see here at every level if i'm taking this level so this is the you can see these two fibers like this they're not two fibers so there the central process of dorsal root ganglion and the motor rootlets together they're coming so automatically length of the motor rootlets also different at different levels because they are designed to join at the foramen that is the main picture of the neuroanatomy here and when we are planning for dorsal ganglion rf we are planning the structure covered with the dura mater which is coming out and blending with the epineurium so i am burning both i am ablating both that's why in this lumbar and the cervical zone we prefer pulse radio frequency than conventional radio frequency because motor rootlets 
you cannot separate the motor rootlets so you are going to burn both so that's the concept of dorsal root ganglion rf so now i will see the position of the dorsal root ganglion so this is one pedicle this is one pedicle this is one pedicle so this is one foramen this is one foramen so if we see what is the position of the dorsal ganglion just in the foramen but it is little in the upper level that's why when you are thinking for transforminal epidural at the subpedicular level you are coming here so that space is less if we think for cammins triangle so this is the pedicle so here the dorsal ganglion is little up so that's why this much space we are getting you can see the triangle okay this is the root this is the dura mater or you can say that is the sap here it will come it is a guard i have taken out all these things and this is the end plates so this space this triangle is much more bigger than the triangle below the pedicle so we have to take the needle little up actually this is the place where the pars coming so for dorsal ganglion rf my needle should not be exactly middle of the foramen it will be little up okay so we can see so after touching the pars you have to come little inside so that's why your entry point should be little oblique is not straight you have to take little oblique and then you hit the pars because that is the last bony point without knowing the depth i cannot enter into the foramen because for pulse rf dorsal root ganglion i have to be posterior to the if this is the dorsal root ganglion my needle has to be posterior to the nerve for transformal epidural subpedicular approach i am going above the nerve for cammins triangle i am going below the nerve and for dorsal root ganglion rf i am coming posterior to the nerve because it is pulse rf not conventional rf in the thoracic level you can think of conventional rf because it is not affecting the limb and diaphragm is there to support the breathing for posterior neuralgia for any other causes you can go for conventional rf at the thoracic level but not at the cervical and lumbar level you can see the beautiful Corda equina. You want to see the phylum terminal. So this the phylum terminal. left side and nerve this side right side and nerves this side so that's the arachnoid matter you see so thin so that is the space between the dura mater and arachnoid mater this is the arachnoid mater so this very thin so once our needle is put there so that is the subdural space the spire is attached with the spinal cord roots we cannot separate the spire matter so we all know what the meanings of the dura arachnoid and spire dura is called the toughest matter means 
It's not M A T T E R. It's M A T E R. Dura mater, M A T E R. Mother. Spinal cord is the baby which is covered by the three layers of mother. Like our mother is protecting ourselves, being very tough. Dura means tough. Then arachnoid means wave-like, everything passing through this. And pia is a soft, that is like a visceral layer. So we cannot strip out that pia matter that is there with the roots and the spinal cord. This is the L5 blood sugar is see the angulation l5 is almost parallel this is l5 now coming to the s1 see how do rides ending there slowly and this is level so this is the level where do rise ending now this is s1 this is s2 this is S3, and then S4 is coming there. Okay. L5, S1, S2, S3, and this is S4, and rest all other here. Actually, dorsal ganglion is here in the sacral level. They are quite inside the foramen. They are not at the foramen, which we will see here. The dorsal ganglion here at the level they are in the foramen, but in the sacrum level there inside the foramen because there is a pull of the spinal cord during the aging process from the childhood to the adult so this is all about the concept of dorsal ganglion rf and the position of the dorsal ganglion thank you So now I am going to show you the dorsal ganglion RF. Already we have seen the cadaveric demonstration of the dorsal ganglion. So you understood the position of the dorsal ganglion is just inside the foramen. So if you see this model, so where if this is the root, so you can imagine where should be the dorsal ganglion. So it will be little inside the foramen. So if I want to block the dorsal ganglion, I have to go inside the foramen. So your needle cannot be straight, your needle has to be little oblique so that it can go inside the foramen keeping the needle posterior to the dorsal root. So for that, for every procedure what I always try to follow, you try to find out which is the last bony point so that because in uh, AP view or oblique view you cannot see the depth in the x-ray. So for that you need to do safely first to touch the last bony point so last bony point here is the parse so if i hit the parse first i will take ap view then take little oblique so that you can go inside the foramen and in this obliquity you are touching the parse because if you don't touch parse and try to go inside the foramen you will puncture the dorsal ganglion or the root so better to touch the parse then come lateral view and turn the needle so bending medially you are touching the parts then coming lateral and as for the depth watching in lateral slowly slowly you are going inside so that you can keep the needle behind the dorsal ganglion and then everything will be done as for the stimulation because in the lumbar level we are going to do pulse radio frequency we have seen why pulse radio frequency because here not only the dorsal ganglion is there also the motor rootlets are there they are covered by the dural sleeve so when you are touching when you are just keeping the needle posterior to the dural sleeve we are actually burning both the sensory rootlets as well as the motor rootlets or specifically you can say we are burning dorsal root ganglion and the motor rootlets simultaneously so we cannot differentiate so it may cause the motor weakness so it is not recommended to do conventional rf because the temperature is high for the lumbar and cervical dorsal root ganglion RF. You can do specifically in the thoracic level because in the thoracic level intercostal nerves are there as the diaphragm is there so it will not affect much in the breathing so if it is needed particularly for the post neurology or any other cases 
require you need to block the nerve you can do crf in the thoracic level but not in the lumbar and the cervical level so now i will show you in the fluoroscope how it will be done so we can see this is l5 this is l4 this is l3 say i am going for l3 dorsal ganglion rf on the left side so first i will do squaring of l3 now l3 is squaring we can see this now this is the pedicle this is pars here is the foramen so root is coming like this way it will be little higher level because the subpedicular triangle is smaller than the cambium triangle so that's why it is not between the pedicle it's not exactly at the half you should say it is little up so i can target this so i will do first little oblique so question may come how much oblique we have seen for transform in the epidural i used to take that much oblique where outer border of the pedicle is touching the outer border of the vertebra then you are coming below the pedicle so we can take that much oblique because for that i am going just above the root and going to the anterior space if i am taking that much oblique so then now my target is to hit the pars i will hit the pars so that obliquely i can enter into the foramen So I am taking the point to touch the parts. I can see now the needle is touching at the parts. Okay, it is oblique view. If you see in AP view, how it is looking like. So this is in AP view, needle is coming obliquely, touching the pars. Now in lateral view, I will take the needle ahead to the pars to enter into the foramen obliquely. So now I can see the needle is just behind the foramen, touching the pars. We have already seen. Now I will overcome. the parts and trying to enter into the foramen yeah i can see now the needle has entered into the foramen i am keeping the needle just posterior to the dorsal root ganglion imagining the dorsal root ganglion is here its root will come out like this for subpedicular approach my needle will be little high and so because you can see the pedicle is here so i will go up for cambium triangle my needle will come like this way and this will be the cambium triangle approach for transformed epidural needle will come in the anterior space for subpedicular approach transformed epidural needle will be here and for pars needle will be here just posterior to the foramen i cannot take the needle ahead because then it will puncture the dorsal root ganglion let's see how it looks in ap view so we can see here how the needle has come from lateral to medial gone inside the foramen almost at the medial pedicular line you can see just crossing the pars so we have seen the lateral view and we have seen the ap view so this should be the final position of the dorsal ganglion rf now everything is as per stimulation So we have to stimulate now. If sensory stimulation is satisfactory, then we'll go for the pulse radio frequency.